Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So a lot of you have asked me how I hid my addiction from my family and the guy I was casually dating and pretty much everyone. Um, I wanted to make sure that I was not lying to you by saying that because I might have thought that I was fooling everyone, but in reality, I might not have been. I asked my mom in the car the other day and she said, I said, I asked her, what did you know or what did you see about my addiction prior to me turning myself into jail? And she said she saw nothing, that she was pretty much blindsided when I came clean to her. Now, my stepdad, on the other hand, he saw everything as it was and I knew that. He always we always butted heads because I knew he knew what I was doing and I always tried to avoid situations where he would be because I knew he was going to call me out. We really did not get along for the longest time. Thankfully, we have a very strong and healthy relationship now, but uh, back then, not so much. I hid my addiction using deceit distance and an unhealthy dose of denial on behalf of my family. I lied about everything. I hid everything as much as I could. I had excuses for everything, lies for why I needed things and why I was doing this. And I lived away from home. So in high school, I was good. I was really just a good girl for, for the most part. I mean, I was sexually active as a teenager, but I drank a handful of times, I smoked weed, both of which my mom knew. I was very honest with her back then. And I did take half of an e-pill once, but I didn't tell her that. But I went to college for my first year, only drank, and she knew that, but I just wasn't really into partying. And then I dropped out of college during my second year, and I met up with a different group of people uh, a guy introduced me to the drug scene and it just kind of went downhill quickly. So I dropped out around age 19 and that's when I moved out of my mom's house. I bet I lived with my mom, I think I lived there maybe six months after dropping out of college. Not even, I think it, it was probably four months or less. As soon as I started using drugs, I was out of that house because my stepdad knew. I wanted to have all the freedom, have no rules, no curfew, not pay rent. Like, why? I, I deserve all this. I'm entitled to it. You know, that's how most teenagers think. So I thought that I would just move out. Whatever, fuck you, I'm moving out. And yeah, that didn't really turn out like I thought it would because you have to pay money for things and you can't spend that money on drugs. So I figured it out for a while, but my family also bailed me out of a couple situations. Like when I was in a, an apartment, my first apartment was with one of my really good friends. And luckily she was able to just kind of cover the rent when I couldn't and I had to move. So I moved out, but then I got my own place and it was cheaper and I had my own apartment there. And then I moved in with some friends. So like I just kind of bounced around a lot, but I always had a place to live that just wasn't home or wasn't my parents' house and that helped. I was able to show my parents a version of me that I wanted them to see. I never went over to see them when I was so high that I would be nodding out or sick to my stomach or scratching myself and acting weird. I only presented myself when I was well. And unfortunately for a lot of my addiction, that's really all I got to do was get well. So I, I also found ways to do things that would make me seem like I wasn't in my active addiction. Like I kept a job. I, once I got really bad into heroin, I worked up until my car accident. And then I was off for a few months due to um, physical therapy. And then I got a job again until I went to college. When I went to college, I moved away. So and that's when it got really, really, really bad. And when I moved home from there, I the distance was out of the equation. So I was back home at my parents' house, but the denial kicked in hardcore. I just, 
man, I don't know how they didn't see it at that point. Well, because I lied. I lied and I lied and I lied. I lied about everything and I, speaking of lying so much, I'm fully aware that making videos like this and other ones about my addiction will most likely reveal parts of my past where I've lied. Um, so if you are a friend or family member of mine and you're in that situation and you realize that old Megan lied to you, first of all, I'm very sorry. I was a shitty person then. But second, please remember who I am now and how far I've come from who I was then. And I feel like it's necessary to put these things out there and be honest about them because it might help someone else that was in our situation. So hopefully you understand. And I do feel like I'm taking a big risk by making these videos. But here are just some situations that I got myself into where I got caught and somehow lied my way out of it. Here are some examples of how I maintain my habit financially without being caught. So I knew that if I took extended trips uh, over the weekend, if I went to concerts for and stayed over the night and I could go for days, I would convince people that I wasn't using. People would think that I was fine. So I would take enough drugs with me and every trip, every concert, everything like that, I took it with me. And then I just kind of rationed out my, my drugs until I got to go home. And just about every time I was able to do it correctly and not make myself sick at the end so they didn't actually see that part of me so i would go on weekend trips to, we went to bamboozle which is a big concert we i would go to concerts like across the state in pittsburgh and i would do all types of things like that which kind of gave my family members who were my friends you know i didn't really have any other friends but they had this false idea of who i was because they saw me for extended periods of time without drugs and I would appear to be the same the entire time. So, um, I was also, I also stole from my family directly and indirectly, but I was able to see, I was, I never pushed it. I didn't push the stealing. And um, more often than not, I indirectly stole from them because I would tell them like a lie to get money and then I was still stealing from them because I didn't need it. I was using the money for drugs and I could come up with excuses for everything and anything. I would lie to my college and the school library and just crazy places. And once that kind of ran out, also keep in mind, like stealing money back then was a little bit different because we live in an era of smartphones and apps and you are fully aware of what your bank account is at all the time and you know back then like if you had if you even had an app you didn't have apps you could do it online but it would be like three days behind so I kind of used that to my advantage and um the stealing indirectly thing though th that was more what I did where I would lie and say I needed money for this or I need money for that you know addicts are really good storytellers and we can be very convincing when we need to get well um i had one example that i'm nervous telling these stories because honestly it's like the first time i'm putting the truth out there to people beyond greg because greg we used together and now we're clean together so he knows everything so that's nice but one time I got into an argument with him and I threw my kit down. So a kit when you're using is like your needles, your cotton, all that stuff. I had a little bag of it so that I didn't have it spread around the house. And I threw it on the floor and somebody, like we were dope sick at that point and our drug dealer called and at the drop of a hat, we just left to go get it. And for whatever reason, I left my kit lay on the floor of my apartment. And my dad showed up and found it. Now, you would think you would be caught. Like, you think, obviously, there's needles in my home, like, and a spoon and cotton. Like, that, obviously. Well, my, I thought on the fly, like, okay, quick, how do I get out of this? So I said, I found the kit, and I was pissed at Greg, 
and I took him to get a drug test right then and there. And I was on the phone and I told my dad that we were getting a drug test and I, in reality, did go buy a drug test from a store and we took it, but obviously not with our urine and it showed up clean. And I took the drug test home and said, see, he's clean. Like that's an elaborate fucking lie. But I had to because I, I, what else would I have done? I didn't want to get clean. I didn't want to go to rehab. I didn't want to detox. But there, when there's a will, there's a way. And like I said in my How to Help an Addict video, we want to assume our family members are doing the right thing. So we will ignore a lot of red flags. We will ignore a lot of things until we have concrete evidence. And apparently even when you have concrete evidence, you can lie your way out of that. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. As far as the guy I was seeing when I went to jail, it really was not that serious. Like, it just wasn't that deep. And I had been seeing him, but I was still also seeing Greg the entire time. We were just in a very toxic and dark place that we weren't working and the other guy gave me this image of looking better, which is another thing I did. I would surround myself with people that were good, and then, like, I had a cop friend that I would hang out with all the time, and he was infatuated with me. He basically was like a sugar daddy to me, but not anything sexual, and he would take me out, take me on dates, take me shopping, take me to the bowling alley, do whatever, and I had to meet my mom, had to meet my dad, because, hey, I'm hanging out with a cop. I have to be doing the right thing, right? Why else would he hang out with me? Yep, and going to college, that was another way to m manipulate their idea of me because I was a student, I was trying, I was doing this, and then I had a part-time job, which I think I only kept for like maybe a few shifts, but I lied about that because I was far away, so they couldn't see me. And oh God, when I lived in Williamsport for college, that was the worst were six months of our lives. That was hard. Maybe I'll talk more about that, but like I didn't, we didn't pay bills, we didn't have heat, we had to heat it with our oven, uh, we had to get food from a food bank or steal from the grocery store, and the security guard at the grocery store saw us steal food all the time to the point where he either A, didn't care, or B, wouldn't let us go in. So, yeah, I don't know. I definitely know that I couldn't have like it was a, it was a, oh, I don't, how do I want to say this? It was both parties that contributed to hiding my secret. I lied and they believed it. It's not, I can't really say that it's their fault that they believed it, but at the same time, there were quite a few times when I was presenting them with very concrete evidence and they turned a blind eye and they gave me another chance. Um, I do know that my mom always thought that I was high the few moments that I wasn't. If I was sick, she could see it. She could see that I looked different, like, you know, clammy, sweaty skin and huge pu pupils, and she knew right away. And then she would freak out, and I'm like, no, like, right, right now is not the time, like, I am not high. But that's when she saw something different. That's just how well I maintained my appearance around her. And I don't know. I I can go into more detail about any of the things I've talked about if you'd like. Just leave a comment down at the bottom. If you have any more questions, let me know. I've considered making a video about signs to look for in an addict, but honestly, it's so different for everyone. You know, you have your functioning addicts who maintain a job, which I did for the most part, and when I wasn't able to maintain a job, I had excuses or things that happened. Like, I got arrested and no one wanted to hire me, so that was an excuse for a while. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I hope this helps to explain how I hid my addiction. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.